Kevin with Prickly Pear Camera here. I've been in the camera business for the last 15 years and a lot has changed in that time. But one of the classics that remains is the Canon PowerShot ELF 100 camera. I've been to industry trade shows, CES for many years, and most importantly used cameras and tested them full time for the last six years. And I deal with sales related customer issues and returns all to find out what the best quality most reliable and most trustworthy cameras are. And that's the real reason why I started this YouTube channel. Because I have unusual access to cameras. And I buy and sell and use hundreds of cameras on a monthly basis. I think it's important to remember that a camera is just a tool. And you're the one that's gonna use it. So it's important to understand some of the features and drawbacks of a camera like the Canon PowerShot ELF 100. And that's what I'm gonna go through with, with you all right now. But before I get into that, I want to get into a little bit of backstory of the Canon PowerShot ELF 100. It was released in 2011. It's got a 12 megapixel uh, image quality, a 1 over 2 thirds uh, image sensor size. It was originally priced at 200 US dollars, but it can be found on the used market on eBay, Amazon, Facebook, and more for 75 to 100 dollars, depending on condition. When this camera was released in 2011, I actually happened to be a camera buyer for an online retailer of Canon products. And I was responsible for purchasing this camera directly from Canon and forecasting how many we were gonna need and hopefully how many we would sell. And unfortunately, I, I underbought and we sold out pretty quickly from my recollection. It's available in a number of colors. This is the gray version. Fortunately, I was able to get a hold of one of these a few months ago and I've been using it to take some pictures and video over the last few months. Some of those images and video are what I've shown on the screen. It's got a 3 inch LCD screen that's quite bright. This camera uses uh, rechargeable lithium ion batteries, which I have here. It uses the Canon NB4L and corresponding battery charger. I have an, a slew of Canon NB4L batteries for all of my other Canons that I have and use. If you don't have an original Canon NB4L, that's fine. There's a number of manufacturers offering replacement batteries that have similar milliamp hours and do a respectable job. What you'll find, especially if you're looking at a used camera, is often these Canon NB4L batteries, if they've been used often, as they're, they could be you know, upwards of 10 to 15 years old, can get swollen. And as with any lithium ion battery over time, uh, they will gradually lose their charge. So sometimes if you, if you end up charging a battery for a long period of time and you only get a little bit of use out of it, it's probably the battery and not the camera. In terms of connectivity, uh, this camera has, it's got a USB port on the side of the camera and an HDMI port for outputting video. So now we're gonna talk about some pros of this camera. Uh, for a camera of this size and its generation, it has a pretty quick autofocus time of about 30 seconds to focus in on a subject and take a picture. Go ahead and do that right here. Print quality is actually quite good. I printed up to a 9x11 on this camera and it turned out very sharp. Um, once you go above, say, 11x14, it can, it can show a little bit of pixelization um, just because it's a 12 megapixel camera and that's your biggest restriction is the print size that you're printing. Another pro for the ELF 100 is it handles low light better than a lot of its peers in its time, from Panasonic to Nikon to Samsung and to others. Um, it actually does a pretty good job. I've got a few pictures that I took indoors uh, that I'm gonna showcase here as well. The third pro that I see on this camera is despite the diminutive size of the flash that you see there, it actually does a pretty good job of illuminating the subject up to like 16 feet. And it results in that kind of classic digicam halo effect for the flash in really dark scenes or if you're shooting it. So what are the cons that I see for the Canon PowerShot ELF 100? The number one flaw that I see in this camera is the zoom lens is a little bit noisy. when extending 
you can hear you can hear the noise for sure. The other downside that there is for this camera is when you zoom in up to the 4x optical zoom maximum, you will see a little bit of distortion on the edges depending on what you're shooting and lighting conditions. Here I'm zoomed in on the cactus. If we were actually to blow that up, you would see a little bit of distortion along the edges. So another con for this camera is there is no zoom, no optical zoom anyway, whenever you're zooming in video mode, it's all digital zoom. And that will uh, result in generally pretty, pretty poor quality video. You'll see a lot of pixelization and blurring and it's not very satisfying to the eye. It looks very unnatural. So if you do use the video mode and this does shoot um, HD video, I would recommend not zooming at all. So getting as close to the subject as you can and then moving your hand with the camera instead of using the zoom toggle to zoom in. So what do you guys think? If you have a Canon PowerShot L100, I'd love to hear your thoughts below. If you're interested in buying one, what, what are the features that you're looking for in this camera? I really enjoy shooting with older digital cameras like the Canon PowerShot L100. And I hope this series, and it is going to be a series of classic camera reviews of mainly digital cameras that were produced at least 10 years ago. This camera was produced 12 years ago now. And we're going to go through some of my favorites. And I hope to release those videos every, every few days. Thank you for watching. And happy shooting.